So uh, I changed the topic a little bit because I realize calling ourselves dumb with AI will be a really bad topic. Uh, so what I uh, did is last two months, I did a lot of research how AI is really impacting us in uh, not just like, okay, changing how we drive or changing uh, how do we use self-driven cars, how it is really going to impact as a society. Are we going to be a society of ready player one where we'll be all sitting at home and just playing video games or something else? How many of uh, you have watched movie Ready Player One? Cool, awesome. So what do you think about the future? You think that's our future? <laughs> so that's what I want to talk about. So uh, in the agenda I have, uh, I thought, talk a little bit about, about human history and how it is, uh, will be impacted with AI. Uh, how our cognitive thinking is impacted with AI, uh, and uh, some of my uh, future predictions. That will be exciting, right? <laughs> if we know the future. So before I start this slide is, uh, you know, my theory is uh, I can blame Star Wars for everything. From mobile phones to talking without anything, language, uh, to universe, to space travel, to everything. And if you really look back uh, on a serious note, it's phenomenal how can they think about flip phones 50 years ago, 60 years ago, uh, space travel, talking about Mars, color of Mars, all of the things. It, it's fascinating to me. So AI has given us tools to process information faster and better and cheaper. That's the promise. All of us see that. Is it true? What do you think? Is that AI is all about, or is it more? Okay. All right. So let's talk about more. So we all talk to Siri now. How many of you use uh, voice to type emails now? Fascinating, right? And how many of you remember Tay? You remember? So it's fascinating. We talk about solving words problem, but we can't solve the voice problem yet. So I don't know where are we. So I'm an optimist, but it's still, we are still figuring it out how can we communicate with each other more effectively. And we can't even communicate with computers. Well, this is my favorite slide, by the way. There is AI for dating. So as if we don't know who to date with. <laughs> uh, there is a, so most interesting to me was this one, capsule AI. So we have an AI to remind us what are the good things in our life. All memories we don't even remember. And elevator helps you buy cannabis, <laughs> personalized. <laughs> so it's, it's really interesting. What I'm finding it is we are not, are we really using AI for the right things or we are just using AI as fun? Uh, if you want, I have a 10 page list of all the AIs. <laughs> So how is really AI impacting us, the areas which I felt uh, is interesting and relevant to this conversation in this group? All of you guys are mostly in programmers and you understand technology better than me. Uh, I'm a business guy, so you know, the, when I go to the meetings, I say, you know, I know how to connect the dots, but I have guys <laughs> who can deal with that. Uh, but the big one is writing skills. What concerns me is I don't see my kids making notes in the classroom. And I remember, and I still have a paper notebook and a write. How many of us can even spell Antarctic con in this room? <laughs> Two, three? <laughs> it's fascinating that we don't even know how to spell words. We use AI to even write resumes. There was a previous company, there was a company in the previous slide they help you even craft your resume using AI. Scheduling and planning, that's another big problem. We leave it to AI. So we don't want to talk to people. We want to do virtual brainstorming. Oh, let's go to Zoom and let's do a call and we'll do an amazing time and we'll solve this word problem. Do you really think we can solve the problem? Do you really think we could have done this conference sitting at our home with this backdrop? And that's where I see the problem. We are not thinking. We are not thinking about human, like how we humanize AI. 
this is a term I'm coined. Ha the big challenge I see it is we are talking about most amazing technology solving world's problem. How? Without humans? So this is uh, interesting experiments we did. Uh, where we find uh, a company, they make brain sensors. And we put these sensors when uh, tasters were tasting breakfast food. And we were figuring it out what people liked without they telling us. What do you think about that as an experiment? Cool. All of us are geek. We'll say, we love it. It's beautiful. It's amazing. But think about it now as a marketeer, as a digital marketing person helping organizations selling more of sugar-coated corn to uh, amazing wines to whatever, what are we doing? Do you have a choice when you go to a shop? Do you have a choice? We decide what to put where. I know exactly as you walk in into a store what you are going to buy. And you think you have a choice. That's the world we are living in. Is that the right word? Is that the world we want to live in? Do we want to have choice? So uh, when I talk about brain, the uh, so big thing I wanted to really discuss is how our brain function. So if we all know brain is a muscle, brain needs to be exercised. So we need to find ways how we continue to keep our brain working. And uh, if you really see all of us, we are continuously thinking. In fact, a lot of time we find problems which doesn't even exist. Right? Why? It's a, it's a real thing. Because if you don't find those problems, our brain starts shutting down. And it's fascinating, even in the office, I heard your talk, your talk, all of you are talking about stress and use stress and de-stress and all different variation of a stress. What is really about? I think we create all these stress because we need problems. As a human, we need problems. We thrive on problems. At least I know I thrive in chaos. If you get, put me in a situation where I don't need to do anything, my brain shuts down. For the last 10 days, it shuts down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the heck am I doing here. And it's really fascinating. So, in fact, I was talking to one of my friends, and he says, you know, I want to retire. I said, okay, well, that's wonderful. You can retire. You made enough money. You don't need to do anything. He said, but I don't know what to do after that. <laughs> And it's, a, it's a proven, by the way, most golfers have amazing life after retirement. Why? Okay. <laughs> what that means? You can play any other game. Why golf? No. See, when you play golf, you are deciding. Your brain is continuously working. You're figuring it out. Your body movement to win, to ball, to 100 other decisions you are taking. And that's fascinating. So what I'm trying to say it is, we have, we need problems. Problems are so important that we lose our identity if we don't have problems. And we like to solve problems. And that's my next slide is about. So what AI is going to do? The biggest problem AI is going to create for us, which is already happening, untrained workforce. Are we ready for future? Do we have people who can solve future's problem? And what are those problems? Do we know what kind of problems we are going to have in future? Because we all know this ship will be pretty much self-guided in maybe 20 years, 30 years. Even now, there is so much technology, mostly it is self-guided. We have seen self-driven cars already, food, it's interesting, I'm seeing so much food innovation is unbelievable. I have seen, in last few years there was a machine, you feed in a bunch of cartridge and it makes Indian food. <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> All our problems, uh, uh, even the Wall Street, we are doing machine learning for what? So I can predict better so my portfolio makes more money than your portfolio. I don't know how long can that last. But AI has to solve some real problem. There are a lot of problem around health. In fact, one of my friend owns a company called Wyom. They are talking about with the 
microbiome analysis tell you what you should or shouldn't be eating. Challenge the data from that where the data will come, but I have a feeling in next 30, 40 years, we will solve a lot of our health problems. We may not even have cancer. We may not have these diseases which we have, even common cold. How do we fix that? We will do all those things, but the big challenge is what will we do with this population? Are we going to be ready player one or what? And that's a serious question I have for all of us and people in this room, I think we have an obligation to solve that problem because the rest of the world is not thinking about it. The rest of the world is worried about AI, that AI is going to be the machine going to kill us. Second problem is I see is the universal pay. I don't know how many of you are aware of universal pay. Just four people. Do you guys know what is universal pay? Great, wonderful. What do you think? Is it a real problem? Mm -hmm. But don't you think it is entitlement? No. Which is going to happen. It's a reality. We all have to accept it. Maybe in 20 years, maybe in 50 years, maybe in 100 years. We will be there where humanity has to change the way we function. We have to change all these standards. And same thing apply to health. Now, I don't know how many of you are aware that after the Obamacare, a lot of people are coming from all over the world and getting treated in American hospitals and they leave. And we are all paying the bills, all of us. How do we solve that problem? As an American, I feel like it's not fair because it's my tax dollars. But as a human, I feel like this is not really, I mean, this person is sick. We have to provide him some medicine, Let's provide him some whatever he needs to solve this problem. And this is, this is really the problem keeps me up in the night today. That how we solve this problem when we will have, this is, this is what really is. It's 80-20 rule. We all know 20% people decided future of 80% today. Is it further going to be shrink to 98 too? 2% people will decide what you are going to eat, where you are going to go, what you can do, what you cannot do, 2%. Is that the world we want to live in? And the last one is wealth distribution. How we manage that? We always talk about wealth should be equally distributed, everybody should do this, this, this. America is pretty diverse that way. How about other countries? I was told Chile, 8% people have the, 10 people have what, 90% wealth? It's ridiculous. And I, I like money. I'm not saying I don't like money. I want to make money. I want to make so much money for me, for myself, for everybody else too, sometime. But how do we solve this problem? Because on the other note, we see people like Bill Gates. He has spent so much money on molten salt water reactor. No, no, I don't know. How many of you know about molten salt water reactors? And I personally, as a student of science, feel that can solve some problems and we are fighting with China now, he can't even do it. So there is no place we can test these technologies. He's trying to solve so many amazing problems, but not rest of the world. People are chasing money instead of chasing dreams. We used to be dream chasers. That's how humans grew. That's how we changed the world. Not anymore. Anyway, I can't solve all the problem today, but we can. And these are my bold predictions. I believe we are going to have alien contact in this century. I don't know whether I'll be alive or not, but that's going to happen. How many of you believe here in this room? What about the rest of you? You don't think that there is another human being or another alien on another planet or another universe? Think about it. We can't be the smartest human being or smartest being on the planet. Sorry, in this universe. And there are how many universes? We're discovering one universe a day or more, I guess. Second is, uh, you know, food. I personally think the kind of food we eat today, whether it's veg, vegetarian, non-vegetarian, chicken, whatever it is, it's not sustainable. We need to find alternative food source. 
our population is going to increase. We are going to add 3 billion more people. They are saying by 2050, I think it's going to happen sooner than that. What are we going to do about it? This is a serious problem. Clean water, we all talk about it. What are we doing about it? Nothing. I think we have to start thinking and planning those things. That's the big challenge. And my big prediction is higher human consciousness. Today, I don't know about you, but I personally feel on this ship, when I walk around people, I can feel them. I can feel that they are happy, they are joyous. It, it's, it's fascinating feeling. I never had this feeling 20 years ago, 15 years ago. What is that? I think our awareness on energy and the feelings is heightening. As a human, we are growing. Is it possible that we don't need to talk to each other? We can experience that. And that was proven in Star Wars. They could do that. <laughs> Any questions for me? No? All right. Thank you very much.